All right. It looks really confusing, but once you know how to read it, it's not a big deal. All right. That is the Greek letter sigma, capital S in the Greek alphabet. Yep. All right. In math, it means to do a certain mathematical operation. Where have you, when you use it in an Excel spreadsheet, what does it do? Sums. It sums up the numbers. Sigma means sum up. So if you see a sigma, it means you're supposed to sum, sum, sum something up. That's really hard to say. Okay. <laughs> what they want you to do, why they put these numbers on it, it says start summing by putting one in for n. And you, and you do every number until you get to the top number, which is 4, and that's where you stop. So it literally wants you to go put 1 in for n. So it wants you to figure out what's 2 times 1 minus 3. That would be negative 1. Yeah? Plus summation, sum, sum means add. Now, put the next number in. If I put the next number in, so I would have 2 times 2 minus 3, which is positive 1. Yep. Sum plus. Now what should I put in? I should put a 3 in. So I would go, what's 2 times 3 minus 3? Because it, when it says from 1 to 4, it means go from every number starting with 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. So if this had said from 7 to 10, you would start with 7, 8, 9, 10. So you have to use the numbers they write on the sigma symbol. So that would be 6 minus 3 or 3. And then last but not least, I get to 4. 4 is the last number, so that's where I'm going to stop. And if I put 2 times 4, minus 5, you are correct. 8 minus, whoa. Five. Minus 3, sorry. <laughs> okay, try that again. It's going to be 5. And then summation means sum it up. What is the sum of those numbers? And so altogether in this case, that sum is 8. Okay, so you have summed up those numbers. Now that seems like who would ever use that wacky, crazy notation? Why would you care? Okay, that wacky, no crazy notation is the whole basis to major concepts in calculus. Major, major, major. That let us do all kinds of tons of real world things. That idea of summing up stuff, and we sum it up infinitely. Yeah. yeah. Th this is a beginning touch of a, a whole branch of mathematics known as analysis, where they start worrying about what happens if you try to sum up an infinite list of numbers? Do you get a sum? Does it just get huge and it goes to infinity? What happens? So um, you know, in this case, this one's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So if I tried to add them all up and I let it go forever, I'm going to get infinity. It's just going to become a giant, giant number. There are other sequences that do not. We'll see some later on in this chapter, not today. Yeah, the numbers get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller fractions, but you will get a sum when you add them all up. All right, now, here is your challenge of the day. What if I am crazily insane? What if I said, sum this puppy up? Okay. How many of you think that this would be fun to do? What will I have to do to work that problem? I would have to put 22 in. 23 in. 24. 25. How many of us are looking excitedly about having to do all those numbers? We have one. Well, you can do it with a calculator, but let's face it, it's still a pain. There's got to be a better way. What if you're standing in the middle of the ocean or something? What if you're something? Well, at the moment, for us to do this, uh, right now, all we can do this is very tediously slowly. But in a little while, once I've developed a couple formulas, we will come back and whip out this answer lickety-split with minimal mathematics. So, that one's on hold for a few minutes. You're loving it. So, we actually get to the major point of today's topic. I should
should have made that big. This is important. Arithmetic sequences, today's major topic. We are only going to actually learn arithmetic and geometric. And no, it has nothing specifically to do with geometry. So for anybody who's having a heart attack that I said the G, G word. So we want to do arithmetic sequences. Arithmetic sequences have a certain specific pattern. I'm going to give you some examples and you're going to tell me what the pattern is. You already gave me a couple of these already back when you were first naming examples of sequences. My question is, what is happening in this sequence? That is 1.2, 2.4, 3.6, 4.8. Yeah. What about 193, 86, 79? So the key thing is I'm doing what every time? I'm adding the same number. Key thing, it's the same number every time. The first one I'm adding two every time. One point Second one's adding one point two every single time. Negative seven. And the third one, and yes, and you have to think of it as addition. You are adding negative, negative seven. seven each time. I'm adding negative seven. You always think of, of arithmetic as adding a number. Never. So when I write you a definition here, arithmetic sequences, they add the same value to each term. The key thing, same value. There are sequences, the one Josh gave us there at the beginning, that added one, then added two, then added three, then added four. That's a sequence. It's not an arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic must add the same number every time. Okay. That number you're adding every time has a name. So in this case where I was adding negative 7 every time, that is known as the common difference. We will henceforth abbreviate it to just be talking about the difference. It is in formulas, it's represented by the letter D. So the how much you're adding each time, that's called the common difference. So as far as what D stands for, yeah. Okay. The question is, how do you find these? Could you tell me a way, how on every one of these could you have figured out what the difference was? How did you know this was 1.2 or that was maybe? Subtract one. Which order would you have to subtract them in? Yeah. Yes. So you always find the difference by taking the second one minus the first one. That's how you'll always be able to identify the difference. Even if it's icky, horrible numbers, it's not immediately obvious. You can throw it in a calculator and find out what the difference is. So it's always the second one minus the first one. Okay, now here comes the fun. Suppose I gave you this lovely sequence, 3, 11, 19, 27, etc. And I said to you, ah, just for kicks and giggles, let's find the 200th term. Okay, if any of you dare to attempt to list them all out as a, your method for finding the 200th term, I will not give you credit. <laughs> or I'll put it at the 200,000th term. Well, you can take three. <laughs> three okay. Okay. So, what we are looking for is there a method for figuring out the 200th term without having to add it up till I get to the 200th one. That would be insane. There is. There's a very big pattern here. So let me uh, help you start pulling it out. What's the difference? What am I doing each time? Add an 8. Okay, technically, how much did I add to get from the first term, 3, to the 19? How much was added? 16. I added 16, didn't I? And to get from 3 to 27, 24. I added 24. Ah, Eric says it's going by 8. So 8 times 2. So it went up 8, then it went up 16, then it went up 24. It'd be 8 times 499 plus 4. Did you not check? 8 times, okay, I'm not sure. <coughs> you're 
you're kind of there. I'm wanting to get this into more general forms than that. Okay. So when this was the second term, right? 11 was the second term. I'm. I took it time. I just added eight. 16 is really what? Eight plus eight. Eight plus eight, or can I say 16 is eight times two? You can't see that color. Let me do that in a different color. So 16 is really 8 times 2. 24 is really 8 times 3. Now here's what I want you to notice. When I was finding the second term, I did 8 times 1. When I was finding the third term, when I was doing the third term, I multiplied by 2. When I was doing the fourth term, I multiplied it by 3. So I'm always doing one less than the term I'm on. So if I was on the 200th term, I'll actually be multiplying by 199th, one less. Okay, now let's turn that into a complete formula. But the key thing is, remember, it wasn't just 24 I got as an answer. Why did I get 27 as an answer? I'd add the 3, and 3 was the what? The first term. So you had to take the first term plus, okay, why was it 8 every time? Why were we using 8? That's how far they apart? That's the name of that? That was the difference, wasn't it? So I was taking the difference times in formula. How do I say it? One less than the term I'm on. A and A minus one. Okay, A is that last term. A what letter is the number of the term I'm on? Oh, A minus oh. one. N. N is the number of terms I'm doing. So I'm doing N minus one, not A sub N minus one. I'm doing how many terms am I on? So now that you know this little formula, this is the sequence. So I would do first term, which is three. What was different? And what was my number of terms I was doing? So it's technically 200 minus, minus 1 or the 199th term. And so now that you know that formula, you just have to plug it in there and punch it in the calculator. 4595? Okay. 1595. Okay. So that would mean in symbols, A sub 200, the 200th term of this sequence is the number 1595. Okay, so would it be that hard to find the 200,000th term? No. If you know this formula, so n is 200,000. Big deal. Throw out your calculator, you know the 200,000th term. We can find any term we want with that formula. It's a thing of beauty. We love that formula. But notice, that formula is common sense. They occasionally throw a question like this on the ACT. You don't have to memorize the formula to know it. You could reason out the pattern and go, oh, look, it's going up by 8. And you could figure out that, oh, if they ask for the 150th term, since I started on the 50th, or the first one, I would need to do the 149th times 8. You can actually reason this one out without having to memorize the formula. Okay, so let's do one with more pizzazz and convince you why you care. We actually, I'm going to put that formula over here on the board. Is there more room over there? I can't kill that yet. All right, there's our arithmetic formula. Now, knowing how much you all love to work with fractions, I thought we'd do a fraction problem. <laughs> yes, it is. Fraction action at its best. Arithmetic sequence. Excuse me. 
I mean, there's nothing there that makes you say, oh, they're adding the same number every time. In fact, how do we know that they are adding the same number every time? What would you have to do to be able to tell? If you need common denominator land, how many twelfths is five six? Ten twelfths. One fourth is three twelfths. So now that you can see it with a common denominator, what's the difference? Yeah, it's going down seven twelfths every time. So you, in this case, have to remember that that difference is negative because it's going down. I'm just smiling because I like that. No, well, I was listening to your voices be a distraction. So I was nice here. Since I'm doing fractions, I didn't make it a very big term. I am going to rewrite the formula for you. I want you to find me the eighth term. Okay, brilliant ones over there. We'll yeah, Matt, Matt's first. Matt, what's the first term of the sequence? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. What's the, what's it? Seven to twelve is the first term. All right. Eric, what's the difference? Oh, it says it right there. Really? Yeah. Oh, you shut your mouth. Why? Yeah, that's what I said. Oh. The difference is negative 7 twelfths. It's going down 7 twelfths every time. Okay, Jake, the hard question. What, what is n? We want the eighth term. So, yeah, n's eight. Okay, you would then go to your calculator. Your calculator knows order of operations, so it will do this correctly. You can throw that whole thing in your calculator once. Thank you. It is indeed. The eighth term would be negative 8 thirds. And that was way less painful than you having to sit there and subtract 7 12 all by yourself. Okay, practical example of why do we care? Actually, these sequences throw up in a lot of things, but you all have been to various sporting arenas. And many of them, the seating sections are kind of pie-shaped sections, the narrow as they go down, like a basketball arena or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So they need to figure out how many seats they have. So I'm going to tell you that this bottom row of seats here has four seats in that row. And that with each row, as it goes up, the second row has six seats, the next row has eight seats. Is that an arithmetic sequence? It sure is. All right. If I tell you, uh, this would be insane, but okay. Suppose I tell you there's 30 rows in this thing. I want to know how many seats are in the top row. Why do you say we just did this? So, since I'm asking you for the top row, the bottom row is a sub 1, isn't it? you got four seats. So that, oh, I am. Okay, well, I'll finish this one. Okay, so what is the top row going to be? What term in this sequence? It'll be the 30th. So, basically, you're out to find the 30th term here. All right, so let's follow the formula. What's the first term? Four. What's the difference? Two. And then how many are we doing? Thirty minus one. Which sounds like an awful lot. Because yeah, that's sixty-two seats in that row. Do you want to call it thirty-one people to get to the middle seat? No. no. That's why they'll put lights down and stuff because nobody wants to climb over that many people. And uh, so it's in the middle and then back eight. Just try to open. You hope. You can go over. All right, we will come back in a little bit, though, and we'll figure out how many seats are in that whole section. So, well, if you guys, if you're the ticketing manager, don't you kind of need to know how many seats you've got to fill? Seriously, you're going to get out there and count them all? I 
be the guy with too much power. Don't be an asshole. But somebody, the designer, the architect, had to figure out how many people there were. Yeah, no, I mean, the order. Yeah, do the math. Thank you.